सो हेलो गाइज एंड वेलकम बैक टू आवर यूट्यूब चैनल स्क्रैच लर्नर्स सो फार वी हैव डिस्कस्ड द क्लोज हैशिंग मेथड्स ऑफ कोलिजन रिजोल्यूशन टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट ओपन हैशिंग ऑल द क्लोज एड्रेसिंग मेथड ऑफ कोलिजन रिजोल्यूशन सो बिफोर स्टार्टिंग विद द ओपन हैशिंग मेथड लेट्स नो वाई वी नीड ओपन हैशिंग दैट मीन्स वट आर द डिसएडवाटेजेस ऑफ क्लोज हैशिंग ड्यू टू विच वी हैड टू इंट्रोड्यूस अ न्यू मैथड open hashing so in closed hashing the main disadvantages are it was difficult to handle the situation of table overflow that means when the number of key values to be mapped is greater than the size of the table okay in that case we were unable to map the key values in any location and this is the disadvantage of closed hashing and the second one is that we have seen in the probing methods that the values are haphazardly mixed that means the majority of the keys are far from their hash locations so you can take an example of quadratic probing there we were mapping at a difference of 1 square 2 square 3 square like this right so in that case the majority of the keys were far from their hash locations that is the original hash locations and this was increasing the number of props and ultimately this leads to degradation of overall performance so to resolve these problems we are using open hashing method and open hashing is also known as separate chaining or simply chaining method so now let's start with the open hashing or the chaining method so this method is one of the most efficient method of handling colliding recovers okay this chaining method uses a hash table as an array of pointers and each pointer points a linked list that means here we are having an hash table which is represented as an array of pointers so if this is our hash table then these indexes from 0 to 9 are the array of pointers and each pointer points a linked list that means each location of hash table or rather we can say that each pointer in the array of pointers represent a linked list okay so these indexes 0 1 up to n points to a separate linked list so how do we map the elements here in this approach the colliding records are chained together by maintaining a linked list of such colliding records that means whatever records are being colliding they are mapped using a linked list that means let's say at the index 1 we are getting colliding records okay so the first record will be stored in the first linked list at the index 1 then it will be chained to another linked list that will contain the colliding records and so on so in this approach the colliding records are chained together by maintaining a linked list and here a separate one way list is used for each set of colliding records i hope you got it that means the index 0 is having a separate list for the colliding records the index 1 is having a separate list for colliding records and so on and here the records in these list are stored at the front of the appropriate linked list whenever a new collision occurs so the colliding records will be stored in the front of the appropriate linked list now let's try to insert these elements in a hash table of size 10 so here we are having a hash table of size 10 and the index of the hash table varies from 0 to 9 here we are considering that the hash address of the key is decided by its last digit so whatever the digit we get from the last digit of the key value at that location in the hash table we will map the elements so for the first data 47 here the last digit that means the rightmost digit is 7 so at the seventh index we will create a linked list we will store the data part 47 and this is the link part now the next data is 32 here the last digit is 2 so at the second index of the hash table we will store this data 32 okay now the next one is 69 here the last digit is 9 right so at the ninth index we will store this data 69 next the data is 41 so we will go to the index 1 of the hash table now at the first index we will store the data 41 in the linked list then 103 so here the last digit is 3 so at the third index of the hash table 
we will store that data 103 now the next one is 72 so at the second index we need to store this data so here we will extend its link part okay this is the second index we will extend its link part and we will store the data 72 in this location now the next data is 5 so we will go to the fifth index of the hash table we will store the data 5 here then the next one is 19 so at the ninth index we will extend the link part of the index 9 and we will store the data 19 in this location then the last element is 102 so the last digit is 2 we will go to the second index of the hash table and we will store 102 here now as we have mapped all the elements of the hash table so all the link part of the link list will be grounded so the link part of all the list points to null value in this way we have mapped all the elements using the chaining method so in a gist we can say that in this approach of handling collision instead of storing the records at locations in the address space pointers are placed where each pointer points to a chain of records which share the same hash location that means if the hash location here is 2 so these records 32 72 and 102 are sharing the same hash locations now let's see what are the advantages of this chaining method there are several advantages of the chaining method so the first one is that the overflow situation never arises in this method why because the hash table maintains lists which can contain any number of key values so there is no overhead of overflow the second point is that collision resolutions can be achieved very efficiently and this method is free from clustering we have seen there is no clustering problem here as we can easily map all the elements in the hash table using pointers then insertion and deletion becomes a quick and easy task in open hashing so we have just now tried to insert the elements right we could do it very easily and while deletion deletion proceeds in exactly the same way as deletion of a node in a single link list and searching operation can be done very quickly in this method as the list maintains an ordering of the keys and this chaining method remains effective even when the number of key values to be stored is much larger than the size of hash table that is the locations available so in a scenario where the number of key values is much larger than the size of the hash table in that case also this method remains effective you can consider a case where the number of key values to be mapped is 10,000 and the size of hash table is 5,000. So if we had used the closed hashing method, then in that case only 5,000 elements could be stored in the hash table. But here as we are using linked list and linked list are dynamically created, so we can store a large number of key values in the hash table without any problem. So these are the advantages of chaining method. Now let's see what is the disadvantage of this method. So the only disadvantage of this chaining method is that of maintaining link lists and extra space for link field. So here we have seen this method is different from all the methods of collision resolution. Here we need link list. So this is only a disadvantage of chaining method. We need here link list and extra space for link field. In closed hashing method we were using arrays and in that case arrays has only data part there is no link part right so here there is an extra space which is required for the link fields so this is all about the chaining method or the open hashing method i hope you understood this topic very well still you can contact me on having any doubt so if you like this video please support our channel thank you